Welcome to God's Food for Thought. We're continuing with more practical principles from Proverbs. You know, when God created mankind, He had a definite purpose in mind for us. First of all, He wanted to share His love. And while doing that, He gave us the capacity to recognize and treasure His love and then gave us the ability to share His love with our family and with those that we come in contact with. That was one purpose. That was probably the major purpose, but there was another very definite purpose that God created us for. That purpose was to work. When God made Adam, He told him, I'm giving you authority over all this, and I want you to go to work. I want you to take care of, tend the garden. He had Adam name all the animals. That took work. Adam worked in the joy of God's presence. Well, when Adam fell, God says, well, now you're going to have to work by the sweat of your brow. In other words, we have to work by the sweat of our brow to overcome this blending of good and evil. In addition, we have an enemy, the devil, the God of this world, who only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So now we have to work even more. It's not just making something, but we have an enemy. And, and we're making it out of stuff that's far from perfect. Far, far from God's good. Work often then became a needed drudgery other than something enjoyed. And even those who enjoy their job, enjoy their work, is still in the context of a fallen world that is under attack by the evil one. But God still wants us to work. God gives us wisdom that we need in this fallen world. We need to do it. We need to work out what he calls us to do. In Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11, this is an, an admonition from the Lord. If you're not working, you need to get to work. <laughs> it's about as subtle as a train wreck, really. And we're going to read it out of the New Living Translation, which puts a nice little texture to it. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Remember, okay, it was God that created these ants and gave them that ability. Verse 7, though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. In other words, don't just live for this moment, but we need to think ahead a little bit. We need to use the mind that God's given us to prepare for for things. Verse 9 says, But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? You know, we live in this fallen world, fallen from God's good. And effort is always needed to have some good in our life. There's a sign that's over the doorway as you leave our church. It says, Nothing good goes unchallenged in this fallen world. He goes on with this description, verse 10, or uh, yeah, verse 10, a little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Get to work, God says. 
There's something about work that when you achieve something, it really gives you a great feeling. It's really a source of positive endorphins that we can have. Some people actually get addicted to work where they work all the time because they love the sense of accomplishment. Well, you know what? Here's what we want to think about today. God is still working in us. God's grace is working. God is working all things together for good for those who are with him, who love him. God does not give up. We all need to look up to him and receive that wisdom that he's still wanting to work into us. God is working. In Philippians 1, 6, it says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. In other words, God's not going to give up working in you until the Lord Jesus actually comes back to earth. God puts it another way back in the Old Testament in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. It says God is searching. He's looking for someone to show himself strong through. Are you a candidate? Do you want to say, okay, God? Well, first of all, we can't be asleep. We have to be awake. We have to desire him, seek after him. We have to do our part and let God do his good part in us. God wants to show himself strong in each of us through a strong connection of faith. The more faith we have, it's really the more revelation of him, the stronger we get in him. How do we do that? Well, we put God first in our thoughts and then watch him work through us. While he, he works, while we act in his wisdom. He works while we act in his wisdom. We rest in him as he works in us. By his working grace, we get to work with him as we overcome in this fallen world. It is God's action with our action. When we do our part, trusting him, we don't just stop and do nothing. God's word says, don't be anxious and don't worry and fret and all of that. That's true. But God is looking for someone to show himself strong through. That means that he's going to work as we work with him. Think for a minute what the Lord has done in your life. Think of how he has worked in you and how he's still working in you. And I want you to think about that as, as we sing this song, When I Think About the Lord. It's a great song of thanksgiving and kind of opens our eyes that, you know what? We're working, God's working, and it's all going to work together for good because we're with him. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think
of the arms.